This is Andy Peroff, Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm Blob Jumbo Fun World Champion Carl Frampton. Carl, out here in Las Vegas, but how are you doing? I'm doing okay, yeah, looking forward, getting close to a fight now, looking forward to uh, fight week and the run up and the build up and yeah, been a long time out of the ring now for me, so looking forward to fighting too. Obviously, you've just mentioned being a long time out of the ring. I spoke to Jamie about it, about how, trying to manage your hand injury that you suffered in what was fight week against uh, Dominguez, which that, that fight had to be cancelled. How have you found trying to manage that with a little overlap into this camp? It's been okay. I've uh, obviously had to take a bit of a break off and had a look at, and the fracture wasn't. It was like a straight crack across it, so it wasn't like shattered or anything like that. It could have been a lot worse. A little bit of nerve damage as well in this part of my hand, but um, I've been able to deal with it. Look, I took some time off, and then I went on the holiday with my family. I started to run. Um, I started to come in and punch late and hit paddles for a long time in camp, and I waited until the right time. Well, I felt that it was right to start sparring, and uh, yeah, we've, we've managed it pretty well. Mentally, how was he trying to deal with that? I'm sure through other injuries or through the defeats in your career, that bag would probably be more difficult for you to deal with. But we've, we spoke about, you know, it was your son's birthday the other day, he was away and you couldn't be with him and you've missed other occasions through your career because you've had to travel away for work. You know, you was prepared for that fight, it was fight week, you'd spent time away again, you spent money as well in camp. Mentally, how was it trying to deal with that? Um, mentally, it was probably harder to deal with defeats, if I'm being honest, but it still wasn't easy to deal with. And, and the main thing for me was, it happened kind of fight week. I was away from my family. Kids were off school over the summer holidays and we could have been away doing whatever, you know, making memories with the kids and having plenty of holidays. And we didn't because I was, I was training for a fight that, that never happened and obviously money money down the drain and everything else but I was angry you know I was angry for a while but I'm over it now like what can you do I kind of laugh about it now it's like the f complete like if it didn't happen to me I wouldn't have believed it and I can see why people don't believe it there's still, still some doubters that think it didn't happen but um, like it is what it is and it's happened I just have to move on and uh, there's nothing I can do about it anymore I know you've you've still got that ambition to fight for another world title. Or you still want to move towards that. But is that the one thing that when you do decide to hang up the gloves, you're looking forward to most? Just being able to enjoy your life with your family. That's why I'm doing everything I'm doing at this point in time. That's why I'm making these sacrifices and the sacrifice of being along away from my family for such a long time. Um, you know, from start to finish of the you know the camp that we're in in Vegas. It's gonna be four. I'm gonna be four weeks without seeing my kids. I've missed my young lad's birthday and other big important milestones that I've missed throughout my career but I'm doing it for a reason and I'm doing it because you know, there's guys who go in the 9 to 5s and, and they're working until they're 65 or 70 years old. I don't want to have to do that. I want to, I want to be someone who can retire before I'm 35 years old and spend the rest of my life with my, my wife and kids and that's why I'm making the sacrifices now. Obviously, you're making sacrifices now, and at the minute you're out in Vegas preparing for next Saturday night, Tyler McCreary just talks about the fight and what you know about him. He's a good fighter, and um, he's a young, hungry fighter, undefeated. He's tall. Um, he has a good, fast job. Kind of a slick, kind of remind you of like a Philly style fighter. Um, and he's not a bad fighter at all. And I know I'm a big favourite going into this fight, and I've seen some things where he's kind of suggested that I'm overlooking him, which isn't the case. And I think he's probably got that because I'm, I've talked about future fights, but I talk about potential future fights when I'm asked a question about the potential future fights. So I don't bring up these potential future opponents. I'm fully focused on Taylor McCreary at this point in time. Every session I've done in the gym has been focused on Taylor McCreary. So um, I think it's a bit of a comfort blanket for him. He's sleeping easy at night, hoping that I have overlooked him. But he's got it wrong. I'm, I'm ready to put in a performance here and, and show people that I've got a lot in this division. Like, I don't want to just beat this guy. I want to, I want to knock him out. Like, I want to do it in style. I want to take him out by the roots, and I think, I think I'm going to do it. Do you feel like, and for 
as stupid as this might sound when I say it, but on Saturday, because of the injury layoff, because of the time away from the sport, you kind of want to blow off some steam when you get into the ring with him as well. Absolutely. Um, and although it hasn't, you know, it's been almost, it'll be almost a year since the last time I fought, and my last fight was a defeat to Josh Warrington. I had, but I, I've had that training camp in the middle, so it hasn't, I haven't been sitting idle the whole year. I've been doing things, I've been keeping busy. Um, but certainly I want to get in the ring and blow off steam and show people that I'm still a big player in the featherweight or super featherweight division and, and I'm ready to fight a champion after I beat Taylor McCreary. Now this is your first fight at Super Feather. I spoke to Jamie, he says he can kind of see you float in between Eva comfortably. If it was up to you and you could settle at one weight division, what would it be? Um, probably 139 because it gives me a chance of becoming a three-weight world champion. Um, it's obviously an extra four pound to play with, which is always a bit easier when making weight. And I feel like I'd be stronger at it, but in saying that, I can still do feather weight. I can still do it okay. So I want to fight for a world title in my third division. I think top rank will make that happen after my next fight, but I need to beat Taylor McCreary first. Now, one man who's had a lot of links to Archie Sharp, who's the WBO world champion, Jamal Herring. Is that a fight which you'd, you'd, you've kind of maybe had a word with yourself, with Bob Arum about? Yeah, I spoke to him about it briefly enough, but Bob is confident that, that we can make the Herring fight. So I've said I'm keen. I think Jamel Herring is keen for it. But again, I have to get past this guy on, uh, on the 30th or that fight just falls apart. Now, another man who I know you know well who's fighting this weekend, Leo Santa Cruz, faces Miguel Flores. Firstly, just what are your thoughts on his attempt to become a four-weight world champion? Yeah, well, it's a strange one. He's, is it the WBO title he's fighting for? WBA. WBA. There is a WBA champion, isn't there, though? No, because uh, Javante Davis vacated uh, to move to lightweight. So, what well, is your man, uh, Cons... Cons... Yeah. See, see, not the champion? So I don't know what's happened. Well, it's all a bit, it's all a bit strange anyway. So he's moved into a new division, but he's fighting a featherweight coming up. So he's not even fighting one of the top guys in that division. A little bit strange, but um, look, it is what it is. And you get these opportunities and you take it. And and Leo's been well looked after by his team. And um, you know, I, I like Leo. I mean, him get on well. I'm, I'm obviously. You know, just sort of taste in my mouth that the third fight never happened and hasn't happened yet. I don't think it ever will happen, but yeah, it's, that's through no fault of my own. Like I've, I've told them I'm open to that fight. I've told them I travel to LA. They know that, but yeah, it's a shame. It's bad to ask. Is that is that the one fight? If it doesn't happen again, you know, if you don't have that trilogy fight for however long you see yourself boxing for from now on. We look back with, even though there's nothing you could have done, just regret that you just didn't have the chance to have a trilogy with him? Um, no, because I've tried. And I know it's not as if I've been dodging it or floating around it and saying I don't want to fight this guy. I have tried to fight Leo Santa Cruz. And they, they know that, you know what I mean? I've, I've been open to it and I want to have that fight. I think that it could have been one where me and Leo fought four times, maybe five times, and the rivalry was that good. and. We were that well matched with each other, but yeah, um, for whatever reason, it hasn't happened. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but I know I've done everything to try and make that happen. And I, I've left myself available to have that fight. Yeah, not my fault. We saw how big the first fight was, and the second fight very much was even bigger. Just how big would or would a third fight be, or would it have been if it had happened? After the second, I still think it's a huge fight. I think it would have been, it would have been the, at its biggest straight after the second fight. Um, me and him could have just fought each other the rest of our career, and people would have enjoyed it. But yeah, uh, it's still a big fight. But I, I'm not, I'm not really, you know, I don't want to talk about that too much anymore because I, I just genuinely don't think it's going to happen. I have other options. The, the hurrying fight is a bigger opportunity for me to become a three-weight world champion. Ireland's only ever. Um, it could happen. Um, I believe it could happen. Do I ever believe a Leo Santa Cruz fight will happen again? No. Moving away from Santa Cruz then, because I obviously don't want to talk about it too much, and onto one of your campmates, just a bit of an intriguing thing that's popped into my head. Jack Cattrall, obviously WBO mandatory, waiting for his chance to face Jose Ramirez. 
but one of your old camp mates, Josh Taylor, defeating Regis Prograi. Firstly, what was your thoughts on his victory in the World Boxing Super Series final? What a performance, what a fight as well. Like, just like the other final in Inui and, and Denar, the skill level on show was like right up here. Um, two quality fighters, but um, Josh won the fight. I fancied him to win the fight, I knew it was going to be difficult. I like Progre, I like his style as well, like I like watching him. I think, I think that his stock's probably risen too after that, even though he lost the fight. But Josh Taylor is on top of the world at the minute. He's uh, one of the most exciting fighters on the planet. Very good fighter and a good friend of mine. So um, I think that I'm excited to see what happens next for Josh. How do you think Jack would fare against Josh? It's a very hard question for me because both guys are my friends. I spoke to Jamie Moore about this about 30 minutes ago. Well, probably an hour ago. And um, I said, look, when the questions get asked to me, if Josh and Jack ever do fight, I'll not be able to make comment because both guys are my friends. So I'm going to say nothing on that. Keep tight-lipped, but... I think two quality fighters will be a very, very good fight. And then obviously moving away from the 140 division and to a couple of fights which are coming up. Walder Ortiz this weekend, your thoughts on their rematch? It's a risky fight for Wilder considering the Fury fight's there and it's, it's done apparently and it's, it's going to happen in, in the, at the start of next year. So definitely a risky fight. But in saying that, Ortiz looks like he's in good shape. But in, in saying that, um, I think Wilder takes him out earlier this time than he did the last time. You just mentioned Tyson Fury there as well. What did you make of his little stint in the WWE? Uh, look, Fury's just a big showman. It's not, it's, it's not for me to say anything about what he wants to do outside the boxing ring, but he's made an absolute fortune doing it. He's raised his profile massively, so uh, yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. Would you fancy having something like that in your career down the line? I doubt it. Uh, I think my, my kids would like me to get involved, but... Um, couple of things I'm not big enough I'm not a big enough name either um, you never know when you retire you can eat whatever you want then call so you can pack the pounds on no, I don't know I don't know about that I just don't think uh, it's not really my cup of tea and just as well because you mentioned it there's that talk of a rematch next year between Walder Fury what are your thoughts on it oh we'll stop well, picking this back up here because security has come and booted us out and now they're following us around so we'll try and end this very quickly Carl um, we were just talking about a possible World of Fury rematch next year what are your thoughts on it if that is to happen in February I think it's a very good fight I like I think the rest of the world thought the Fury won the first fight but I see the next fight being different I still fancy Fury in the fight but I think Wilder will be a bit more gung-ho knowing that he can hurt Fury and he's knocked him down twice but Fury's powers of recovery, like I, I don't know, like he was asleep on the floor. It's like I don't know how he got up from that, but he did. Um, that is a huge fight, absolutely huge fight. I fancy Fury, but I don't think it's going to be. I think although it was called a draw, I think Fury will win the next fight, but it'll be even tighter than the first one. And finally, just a matter of about two and a half weeks out now from Saudi Arabia, where Andrew Ruiz will defend his unified world titles against Anthony Joshua in a rematch. Again, your thoughts on that one, Carl? It's a good fight, um, a very good fight. If I was AJ, I would have probably taken another fight and knocked someone out, got my confidence back. But he's going straight in this fight again, in this rematch. And Ruiz, there's got to be a lot of demons. Mentally, he's going to have to be very strong. Um, I'm not sure how. I don't know. I, I, I see someone getting knocked out. I think if I was going to put money on anything, it would be that the fight doesn't go 12 rounds. It's kind of one of these ones who ever lands first. But Ruiz is a very good fighter, very fast hands. Potentially has the wrong style for AJ. Um, I think Ruiz against Joshua. Or, sorry, Ruiz against Fury. Like, Fury boxed ahead of him. I think Wilder beats Ruiz, but styles make fights, as the old saying goes. It's a hard one to call. If you put a gun to my head, I would say AJ by KO, but I'm not sure. My final question before you and Stephen have to swap over duties and you have to keep an eye out for security. Which, which fight, in your opinion, is bigger for the heavyweight division and for boxing? Walder Fury 2 or Ruiz Joshua 2? Oh, I don't know. I, like, I think they're both as big as each other. Um, two massive fights, two huge fights. Each one can probably say they're the number one in the division, but um, it is what it is. And we're caught by yeah, security. We're caught by security. Carl, thanks for being myself on Boxing Social. No problem. All the best, man. Cheers, Carl. Thank you.